All right, all right. So, leaving off on problem number, what is it, seven. They want you to write the equation in standard form. Now, this is probably by far some of the hardest problems you're going to see. Again, in this case, I'm going to take you through the long process. In class, I will show you the nicer, easier method. But because we're trying to get the practice here, we're going to do it the long way. And appreciate it, right? Because, again, once we have the calculator and how to use the calculator, everything else will flow. So, I'm giving two points. Now, remember, we're trying to go from two points to the form that looks like this. AX plus BY is equal to C. Well, first of all, this doesn't really, I, I mean, my goodness. First, I should probably go to slope intercept or even point slope. Why? Because in point slope and slope intercept, I actually have the variables X and Y. That is out here. I don't have anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my slope. All right. So remember, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Label your points, whichever one you like. x1, y1, x2, y2. So remember, you can just in your calculator. Make sure you put around parentheses just to make sure that you're using the correct signs. These minus signs are part of the formula. Don't get that wrong. So y2, negative 4, minus y1 negative 1, and x2, 2, minus, minus, x1, negative 2. Moving this over here, 2 minus a negative 2 gives me a positive 4. Negative 4 minus a negative 1, we know that this gives me a positive, so I'm left with a negative 3. All right, all right. So this is my slope. Okay, next, what form can I use to would be the, which would make this the easiest to go into standard form? Well, look, I'm given slope and I'm given a point. So let's use the point slope formula. So problem number two or step number two is I'm going to use the point slope. So here, I'm going to start off with what I know. It's y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. I already have an x1 and a y1 labeled from the previous part, so I'm going to use that point, and I know my slope. So look, y minus y1 is a negative 1 equals my m, negative 3 quarters, x minus x1 is a negative 2. Now again, I'm working a little bit, not fast, but again, I'm just plugging in things and under the assumption that you recall some of the things we did in 3, 4. Okay? So, again, yeah, if this is going a little too fast, pause the video. And, again, make sure you're understanding why we're doing what we're doing. So, again, from here, I have a point and slope. I have a form that I can use, the point slope. Point slope. Here's the equation, so I plugged it in. X1 is negative 2, as you can clearly see. Y1 is negative 1, as you can clearly see. My slope is a negative 3 quarters, which I just got from this problem here, or the first section. So now here, I can start making this look a little bit more like standard form. And that's what we're going to do. So notice the first thing that I don't have parentheses here, right? And I'm going to actually clean this up a little bit. So look, negative to negative gives me a positive. So I get y plus 1 equals negative 3 quarters. Negative to negative also gives me a positive. So I'm left with x plus 2. Now, this is where the really interesting part comes in. And again, you just have to be careful and cautious, all right? Now, remember, our goal is to get it to look like this. AX plus BY is equal to C. A side note, if you read the uh, key concept, A, B, and C must all be whole numbers. So notice how here, I already have to get rid of a fraction. So. A key note here, anytime you have a fraction, it is always good practice to get rid of it first. Now, in this case, right, how do we get rid of this dividing by 4? I can actually multiply by 4. We can do what we did before, which was the uh, distribution. Remember how we said if we multiply one side, we have to do it on the other side? So look, here... We're dividing by 4, so I'm going to multiply by 4 to get rid of it on this side. 
Now notice how I'm not going to distribute it to this x plus 2 because it's already being multiplied. Okay, and I hope you're listening to what I'm saying, right? So look, this is multiplication. Yes, you could have distributed, but you're still going to multiply this 4 and cancel out this division by 4. So I don't need to multiply 4 by x plus 2 because 4 divided by 4 are going to cancel here. See that? So in me doing that, what did I do? I notice on the right side, I ended up with negative 3 times x plus 2. Again, I'm going to show you. I'm going to go a little bit further here just to make sure that you're understanding, okay? So again, here it was negative 3 fourths times x plus 2 times 4. That's what I just did here, right? But notice how here I don't have to distribute the 4 because here the 4s are going to cancel. If I rewrite this, notice how this gives me... Notice how this 4, I just brought it over here because I multiplied, right? And look, by me rewriting it, I am able to cancel out these 4s, thus giving me negative 3 times x plus 2. Now let's look at the other side here. I multiplied by 4 on the right. I have to multiply by 4 on the left. Now here I have to distribute. Why? Because look, here we're adding. Notice the key difference. Here we're multiplying this x plus 2 times the 3 fourths times 4. So it cancels. But here I'm distributing. Right, so 4 times y is 4y. 4 times 1 is a positive 4. Again, pause it. Make sure you understand what you're doing on your problem. Don't get these mixed up. Follow the process. Now, notice how this is looking a little bit better now. Notice how now I don't have any fractions. Now I have something. Oh, look, I have some number x. Well, not there yet, but almost. I do have a number y. See, look, here's my by. Now I need to figure out what ax and c are. Well, here, again, there's no parentheses. I'm going to distribute this portion as well. So I get 4y plus 4 equals a negative 3x minus 6. And now notice how it's clear as day where everything is at. AX plus BY must be on the left side. C, it's no coincidence, but you can call it this, is all the constants. So look, this 4 should be going to the right side. So I'm going to subtract 4. So I'm left with 4Y equals a negative 3X minus 10. But again, be very careful here. I wanted a standard form. I want AX plus BY on the left side. How do I get rid of this negative 3x and take it to the left? I'm going to add it. Again, we cannot combine these. These are not x and y's, right? Like these are different variables. So we get 3x plus 4y is equal to a negative 10. There it is. We just found this in standard form. 3x plus 4y is equal to a negative 10. 3x plus 4y equals a negative 10. There it is. Again, I know it's a lot. It's a difficult problem. In the future, I will show you how to get this a lot faster with your calculator. We're still going to have to do some parts, but it'll, again, we'll figure some things out a little bit easier. But again, this is the overall process. Make sure that you're taking your time. And again, mine was a little confusing. I had some really ugly numbers here. Always use your homework help. All right, always, always, always. All right, all right. Let's go to problem number eight. Find the x and y intercept of the line that passes through the points negative six, negative six, and six, negative three. Now here, notice how we don't actually have to do much here. I'm actually gonna show you a nice shortcut. If you guys remember, we can actually graph this on our count, or actually you don't, so I'm going to teach you here. Make sure you're paying attention. You can actually graph these two points on your calculator and see where your x and y intercepts. So I'm going to go through this here in the calculator. So under your calculator, we go to what is called list and spreadsheets. And again, I'll go over this in class a little bit more. A is my X, B is my Y. 
So again, pause this video. Make sure you're doing what I'm doing because it'll make your life a lot easier, I promise. All right? Now looking at here, what are your x's? My first point here is negative 6. My y is negative 6. So I'm going to put that in my calculator. Negative 6 is the x. Oh. My y is negative 6. What's my new point? 6, negative 3. 6, negative 3. All right, so again, notice how my screen looks. Make sure your calculator looks like this. So from here, you're going to go to Menu, Data, Quick Graph. Again, just go back on the video and follow the steps. My X axis is the horizontal axis. My Y here is the vertical axis. And here, you can kind of see a little bit of what you're looking at, right? So looking at here, what is our y-intercept? Well, my y-intercept, or actually, I'll show you how to get the line as well. From here, you go to Menu, Analyze, Regression, MX plus B. Now from here, notice how we can see where it crosses the y-axis, negative 4.5. My y-axis is negative 4.5. It crossed... Right here, where x had the value of zero. Now to get your y, we can move our nice little graph here. And we can move it this way as well. And you can clearly see, oh. Again, I move some of these things here. My x intercept is 18. All right, so again, if, <laughs> For some reason, this is difficult. You can use Desmos, graph this, or graph this on a piece of paper and try to draw the two lines. But again, here, your x-intercept is 18, and your y-intercept was negative 4.5. So you can go back to the video, rewind it a little bit so you can see where everything was at. Follow the same steps that I did. Move carefully on your calculator, and it should be good. All right, all right. Now looking at this equation, it says, what is the equation of the line? Identify A, B, and C in standard form. Well, again, let's look at this line here, right? It's a horizontal line, and this is negative 6. I wish there was a, a quick way to explain this. So I'll try my best to explain it kind of quick, but looking at this graph, right? This is what the graph looks like. Now, first of all, we have to un understand a few things, right? Let's look at this line. If I were to try to write this in y equals mx plus b, which is probably the easiest way to do this, what would you say your y-intercept is? Well, your y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis, which happens to be there, right? It's a negative 6. So your y-intercept is a negative 6. Now let's look at slope, right? Here, my x stays the same. Now let's look at slope, right? Remember here, it's a horizontal line. You can pick any two points. Notice how your rise is 0. To go from here to this point, I don't rise anything. I just run. So my rise is zero, but my run, let's call it, you know, let's go from one to two, is two. But what is zero divided by two? What is zero divided by anything? It's zero. So what is your slope? Well, your slope is zero. So that is how I just wrote this equation, the equation of this line in slope-intercept form. I found my y-intercept, which was negative six. I found my slope, which was zero, because it's a horizontal line, right? And again, this is in the key concept. This was actually back in slope, where we talked about the vertical lines. Remember, this is a positive slope. That's a negative slope. This slope is undefined, and this slope is zero. That was back in 3, 3. So look, here's the equation. Now remember, we're trying to get this to ax plus by is equal to c, or, or equal 